Hey Morningstar, so Monday night my son Sam and I got together with a few other dads and, and son Sam's age doing a small group study and our topic was decision making. Our, our conversation went in lots of different directions but the bottom line of it all was that our decisions have an impact. They affect other people, they, they affect ourselves and our decisions impact our future. So it's really important to create some space between the thoughts we have and the decisions we make. The, the thoughts we have and the decisions, the actions that we take. It's, it's best to consider, uh, stop and consider the best way to respond if someone says something critical about you or to you on social media um, to see, hey, if I, if I just kind of retaliate here by sending out a, 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 an instant nasty gram or Facebook post, what's that really going to say about me? Uh, who all is going to read that comment? What's that going to suggest about my character? You know, it's long been my opinion that social media is, uh, for all the good things about it, it's actually one of the worst ways that we can voice our opinions on volatile subjects. All that, that side-taking does is, is stoke a fire that's been started by the evil one. I mean, seriously, have you ever seen someone, you know, on the opposite side of a subject, read a slanderous or, or, or malicious post and then respond with a, wow, that's a great point. You've totally changed my mind on that issue. Thank you. That's crazy, right? I mean, almost without fail, the negative comment only further exacerbates and inflames the argument, right? I could say the same thing about the actions of several of the St. Louis Rams football players prior to the game this past Sunday, how their actions, not well thought out, I don't think, uh, actually inflamed through, through kind of kerosene on a fire that was, was finally beginning to get under control. I don't know if you saw it, but before running out onto the field, before the pregame introductions, several of the team uh, members stood by the, the tunnel where they, they come out of the locker room and they, they had their hands held above their heads, the now infamous don't shoot gesture. It was not a, a field goal, it was a don't shoot. Talk about disturbing the peace. The St. Louis police chief certainly didn't appreciate that move, and my guess is that neither did the men in blue who worked the game, making sure that these professional athletes get into and out of the stadium and are actually being able to, to play the game um, with protection from a fan or a mob base um, you know, the whole time they're in downtown St. Louis, pretty much. And I have to admit, the decision to make that gesture disturbed my peace, kind of took away from the huge win over the, over the Raiders this past weekend. Not that I'm opposed to a peaceful protest, mind you. I just thought their action was ill-timed, ill-thought-out, and inappropriate. And then, then I saw the post-game interviews with some of the players, and, and I don't know, maybe the media just kind of was out to make them look like a bunch of doofuses by editing out all their well-considered observations and, and, and just showing them uh, the comments that, that made them look, honestly, like fools, like guys who, who hadn't spent much time learning about what was really happening in the city they played football in, and, and guys who had spent even less time considering the impact of their actions. Don't shoot. Hey, even they, they didn't even tell the coach what they were going to do, right? Why? Because my guess, or at least my hope, is that Coach Fisher would have suggested another way to voice their opinions or to use their position and platform as professional athletes to protest in a much more positive way. Now, friends, certainly, certainly free speech is a right and a privilege we enjoy in our country. But as followers of Jesus Christ, people who answer to an even higher power, we should ask ourselves whether exercising a freedom guaranteed under our Constitution is the best and most appropriate way to then build God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. God calls us. He calls us to take stands for peace and justice. But name-calling and finger-pointing and accusatory trash-talk probably aren't at the top of God's list of suggested methods. Now, my guess is that, that perhaps there are a couple of you out there who, who disagree with some of what I'm saying, maybe even passionately, and you're already typing up the email to send back to me. But listen, before you do, would you just consider the words at the beginning to stop, to take a couple minutes to kind of 
pause and think through your thoughts before just pressing sin. To ask yourself if there's a kernel of truth in what I'm saying and then how God would have you most appropriately respond. See, friends, at the bottom line, what I'm trying to communicate today is I firmly believe that the more time that we can put between our thoughts and our actions, between our negative and defensive thoughts and the way we respond, uh, the better off we're going to be. The less peace we're going to disturb in others, in ourselves, and for our own future. And the more time we can actually use to spend focusing on being the peacemakers that Jesus calls us to be as followers of him when he talks to us in his Sermon on the Mount. Be a peacemaker, Jesus said. So listen, this week, be the church. Be a peacemaker. Take a stand for, for peace and justice. Be the church. And I can't wait to be with you in this weekend as we continue our, our series on disturbing the peace. And this weekend is when we're going to reveal the results of our Turn the Page campaign and take up our very first first big give offering. It's going to be a great time of worship and celebration. And I can't wait to, uh, to be there with you. God bless you and have a great week.